memorial tonight the JW platform website says that tonight there'll be over 20 million people at the memorial 20 million most of those are going to be visitors and every single one of them will deny Christ you see when we let the elements pass by we're denying that we have any association with the blood and the finished work of Christ on the cross, that he died in our place, in our behalf. And only by faith in him we can have eternal life. Christians have celebrated this down through the centuries as the work of Christ and our rescue from our sins. But the watchtower says, oh no, don't partake. They tell you before they pass out the element, don't partake of the elements. That's only for the 144,000. Where did they get that? It's certainly not in the Bible, and no other Christians actually believe that, but the watchtower tells their people that, and so they obey by not partaking. They're saying all others besides the 144,000 will live forever on Paradise Earth. That is your eternal destiny, Paradise Earth. You won't be with Jesus. You'll be on Paradise Earth, and you'll be able to get the animals, the lions, and the tigers, and the bears. It'll be like a perpetual picnic on Paradise Earth. You won't be with Jesus. As a matter of fact, I would say most of the here do not want to go to heaven. Let me ask if you want to go to heaven. They're told they can't go there. There's something better Paradise Earth. Ladies and gentlemen, how tragic. How tragic the Jesus that died on the cross for my sins. I don't want to be with him. And they're told you can't. And one of the things they criticize about heaven, or at least they admit that they say, well, Jesus doesn't even have a body in heaven. And all those people in heaven, they don't have bodies. How can they enjoy picnics and parks and butterflies and animals? They don't have a body. Jesus doesn't have a body. All the believers in heaven don't have a body. They're spirit creatures according to the watchdog, which is untrue. That's not what the Bible teaches. And they teach that Jesus Christ is a preacher. His name is Michael. Ask a Jehovah's Witness. There's Jesus, an angel. And they would have to admit that yes, Jesus Christ is Michael, the archangel, a creature. He's not God. He's not the second person of the triune God. He's a creature like you and I. Jesus Christ, when he was crucified, they say on a torture stake, they used to believe that Jesus was crucified on the cross, but now that Jesus was crucified on a torture stake, they took the body down. What did they do with it? They put it in a tomb. And if you ask Jehovah's Witnesses, what happened to the body, they will probably tell you, well, he rose from the dead. But really, if you ask them specifically, what happened to the body that lay in the tomb? You see, Jehovah's Witnesses believe that Jesus Christ, when he died, he went out of existence. He no longer existed. There was a body, but there was no spirit, there was no soul. He's gone out of existence. And he's sitting in a tomb, laying in a tomb. And then God got rid of the body. Go on to JW.org and they'll tell you. God dispersed the body, probably dissolved it in the gases. But the body is no longer around. At that time, there was no Jesus. He was dead. So what did people see on the resurrection? Ask a Jehovah's Witness and they'll tell, tell you well, that God recreated this Jesus that was crucified on the cross. He recreated him because that Jesus is gone. He recreated him as Michael the Archangel. And Michael the, Michael the Archangel does not have a body. And so in order for Jesus to convince anyone that he's risen from the dead, he manufactured bodies. He didn't really have one, he was just a spirit creature. He materialized the body. Let me ask you a question. For Thomas, one of those disciples, he says, I'm not going to believe unless I can handle the body. Jesus had risen from the dead, and Thomas said, impossible. No one can be crucified. 
fight on the cross and be reconciled and be resurrected, it just can't happen. I need to touch the body. I need to put my finger in the marks of the nail. I need to put my hand in its side and read what it says in John 20. Jesus Christ appeared to Thomas and what does he tell him? Thomas, don't be unbelieving, but believe. Here I am, I've risen from the dead. Remember when I told you that? I told you numerous times I would be crucified and the body would be risen from the dead. Here I am, touch me. All these witnesses have a serious problem because they say that this Michael, this, we can call him Jesus as well, this, this materialized bodies that don't really exist. They don't represent the body on the cross because that body has been disposed of by God. You see the deception of the watchtower is correct that Jesus was not literally raised from the dead in the body, in the glorified body, that he's some spirit creature. And this is why, ladies and gentlemen, Jehovah's Witnesses really don't want to go to heaven. And it's why at this memorial you don't sing songs to Jesus, you don't praise Jesus, you don't pray to Jesus, you don't worship Jesus, and there's hardly a word that he's raised from the dead. You see, that's the very heart of the Christian gospel. The death, the burial, and the resurrection, the bodily resurrection of Jesus. And the Jehovah's Witnesses deny the whole thing. And the reason is they follow the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society. Another issue Jehovah's Witnesses say where they undermine the very person of God, where they ridicule God by saying the Holy Spirit is not a person. The Jehovah's Witness theology, the Holy Spirit, is a force. It's like electricity or gravity. But over and over again, the Bible refers to the Holy Spirit as a person, a person that convicts the world of sin. Ladies and gentlemen, how does a force convict the world of sin? How does a force teach you anything? And yet the Holy Spirit is a person, the third person of the triune God, is that what is who we trust in for our salvation? The triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Probably the most serious error of the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society folks, is that this church, this organization, robs God of His glory. You go, how did they do that? That in order to be saved as a Jehovah's Witness, you must associate with the organization. This church, this, if you want to call it denomination, this religion says, in order to have salvation, it's in an organization. Ladies and gentlemen, where is that in the Bible? Over and over again, the Bible says salvation is in a person, Jesus. Faith in Jesus is the message of the Bible, the New Testament, for reconciled to God by faith in the finished work of the cross, who has shed his blood for my sin personally, that he rose from the dead, and he's going to glorify God and that he lives today. And the watchtower said, oh no, it's not sufficient to have faith in Jesus. And even to have faith in Jehovah God, you need to belong to the organization. Let me read it to you if you're doubting what I'm saying from the Watchtower magazine, February 1983. Jehovah is using only one organization today to accomplish his will, to receive everlasting life in the earthly paradise. We must identify that organization and serve God as part of it. Did you catch that? If you want everlasting life, it's in an organization. So faith in Jehovah God, faith in Jesus, is not sufficient to have eternal life. You must associate yourself with the organization.
Ladies and gentlemen, one of the characteristics of the false religion and of a cult is the mind control of the organization. Ladies and gentlemen, everything the Watchtower says and decrees in their books, their publications, like the, like the Awake magazine or the Watchtower magazine, this comes from God. And God rebuilds it through eight men in upstate New York we call the governing body. And the governing body reveal it to the Jehovah's Witnesses and they say, this is what you must believe. As a matter of fact, if we change your mind, like they have so many times of false prophecies on the return of the Lord, if he doesn't return and we change our mind, we come up with a new day, you have to accept that it's from God. Ladies and gentlemen, if you live around 1925, by that time the Watchtower Bible and Tract Society had already predicted the end of the world in 1914, and then again in 1918, and then in 1925, every Jehovah's Witness was expected to go door to door with and they would the end of the world, millions now living will never die. 1925 is going to be the end. Come on, straight through. Jehovah's Witness, if you would believe that, many Sell everything and go door to door preaching the kingdom and the good news. Don't get married, don't have children, don't invest in business. Okay, the is the time is coming to end, and many Jehovah's Witnesses invested everything in 1925. But it turned out to be yet again another false prophecy. Ladies and gentlemen, the Jehovah's Witness at that time left the organization and they will never tell you unless you look up, do a little research on your own, study history, that indeed half the organization left. And the Watchtower says, well that's all light. That God reveals His truth little by little and the light gets brighter and brighter. I want to ask you, where was any light in 19? If that was to be the end, it didn't happen. Isn't that a false prophecy? Jehovah's Witnesses have no way of determining if a prophet, the true prophet, or false, because every description of a false prophet that the Bible gives, they've failed the test. 